Forget everything you thought you knew. The next big showdown in tech isn't just about who writes the cleverest algorithm. It's about who forges the most compelling piece of hardware, because owning the device means owning the user. Picture it like this. Software is a language, but hardware is the body that speaks. And whoever controls that body commands the conversation. It starts with a legend, Johnny Ive. You know him as the mastermind behind the iPhone's curves, the Apple Watch's seamless wrist hug, and the iPad's featherlight elegance. He didn't just draw each device. He choreographed an entire era of human device intimacy. Now, in a jaw-dropping twist, he has spent the past two years collaborating confidentially with OpenAI to develop new paradigms in personal technology. In mid-2025, the world finally learned that OpenAI shelled out nearly $6.5 billion to acquire Ive's enigmatic hardware startup. But this wasn't just a transaction to grab a logo or some patents. It was a declaration of intent. A signal that, yes, the next great frontier of tech requires hardware that lives and breathes AI. The acquisition included roughly 50 engineers, designers, and manufacturing experts. All veterans who cut their teeth at Apple. Now, these innovators are fully embedded within OpenAI's operations, tasked with crafting a device that feels less like a gadget and more like an extension of your very being. Think about it. One of the most celebrated designers in modern history, whose work helped propel Apple to global dominance, has essentially handed his playbook to Sam Altman. This partnership marks a significant shift. Rather than treating AI solely as software, OpenAI is investing in the physical interface as the next frontier. Industry reports suggest their project focuses on a screen-free, intuitive, contextually aware device, one that remains unobtrusive yet responsive. This ambitious undertaking is proceeding under strict confidentiality. So who exactly is on this dream team that OpenAI just snapped up? The individual names might not roll off every tongue, but their creations certainly do. Chief among them, architects behind the iPhone's sleek silhouette, the Apple Watch's wrist hug that manages to feel weightless, and the iPad's minimalism so perfect you forget you're holding glass and metal. These are people who obsess over millimeters and nanoseconds, turning sheets of aluminum into objects of desire. When Apple legend Johnny I've left in 2019 to form his own consultancy, Love From, many assumed his focus lay in luxury goods and discreet consulting gigs. But a stealth spin-off of his team called IO quietly began sketching prototypes for a next generation of smart devices. Ones with ethics at their core, designed to reduce screen addiction and foster meaningful human connections. Their early design sketches included tiny, spherical modules with non-reflective surfaces, an aesthetic that completely departs from the slab of glass paradigm. Now, imagine grafting those hardware visionaries onto OpenAI's AI geniuses. Research scientists who can train massive language models to anticipate intentions, predict context, and deliver insights seamlessly. On one side, you have designers obsessed with the look, feel, and emotional resonance of every curve. On the other, you have AI architects obsessed with latency, context awareness, and the predictive intuition of a learning system. When those two worlds collide, the results look less like prototypes and more like glimpses of a sci-fi future. Picture late-night jam sessions where a designer sketches a haptic feedback pattern while an AI researcher riffs on voice-based prompts. What if the device could sense your body temperature and adjust notifications accordingly? Asks one. Sure, but how do we ensure privacy while still monitoring biosignals? Counters another. Those are the kinds of debates happening right now in lockdown OpenAI labs. It's a relentless, high-stakes fusion of art and science. And because this team hails from Apple's war room, where perfection was once the standard, it's fair to say expectations have never been higher. We're accustomed to referring to a smartphone as that familiar rectangle of glass we carry everywhere. However, that concept is changing. The collaboration between Johnny Ive and OpenAI isn't focused on producing a faster, sleeker phone. Instead, they're developing a non-smartphone, a device designed to redefine expectations rather than simply upgrade the existing iPhone model. Let's rewind to 2007, when the original iPhone was unveiled. Steve Jobs and Johnny Ive didn't pitch it as the best BlackBerry alternative. They pitched it as the future of communication, a device that made keyboards obsolete, scroll wheels archaic, 
and flip phones a relic. That singular leap rewired our collective expectations overnight. Now, 18 years later, we're caught in the comfortable grip of the smartphone era, unaware that a pivot toward ambient intelligence is already underway. Ive himself has publicly expressed regret about some unintended consequences of the iPhone, namely, the explosion of screen addiction and the erosion of mental well-being. That realization is the philosophical core driving this new project. If smartphones contributed to a world glued to screens, what happens if we introduce a device that strategically avoids locking you into visual loops? Early leaks suggest a design that is screen-optional, voice-centric, and so intuitive you barely notice it's there. Rather than bombarding you with push notifications and infinite social feeds, it surfaces information only when you truly need it, delivered through discrete haptic pulses, subtle audio cues, or natural language interactions. No menus, no app grid, no one-size-fits-all UI, just elegantly curated context. Industry whispers hint that the device is roughly the size of a credit card or maybe a bit larger, designed to slip seamlessly into your pocket. When you need it, you hold it in your palm. When you don't, it nestles in your jeans and stays silent. Context-aware sensors monitor everything from your location and ambient noise to your biometrics, heart rate, body temperature, even subtle shifts in posture to offer personalized prompts. That's exactly what Johnny Ives' team has been sketching for two years, while OpenAI's neural nets learned how to anticipate needs without turning every moment of your life into an algorithmic feed. This device is about presence, not addiction. It's about reducing screen time, not maximizing it. And it could be ready as soon as late 2026. Of course, this doesn't exist in a vacuum. While OpenAI and Ive are secretly engineering their non-smartphone, everyone else is frantically trying to stake a claim in the future of hardware. Mark Zuckerberg has placed his chips on smart glasses. He envisions a future where AR overlays transform the way we interact with the world, directions pinned to sidewalks, digital avatars sharing your living room, and instant translation subtitles floating across the lens. Meta's recent product demos showcase glasses that look less like sci-fi props and more like everyday eyewear. Yet early adopters grumble about weight, limited battery life, and notifications that blink into existence right in your line of sight, disrupting focus. Still, Meta keeps pouring R&D dollars into making AR glasses feel less clunky and more like a natural extension of reality. They believe the next must-have device is something you wear, not something you hold. Remember Google Glass circa 2013? The infamous glass hole era, where people wore tiny screens on their heads, got banned from bars, and became a running joke. Google's now on Glass 3.0. Call it the humble redemption. The new prototypes ditch the conspicuous camera bump, tout better battery technology, and promise real privacy features, like shutters that physically block the camera. Google strategy, slim frames, subtle notifications, and an AI model named Gemini powering context-aware suggestions. Think live translations pinned to your vision, restaurant reviews overlaid in your line of sight, and an always-on mic that listens for natural commands. The challenge, Make these glasses something you actually want to wear, not something you hide in a drawer. Meanwhile, Apple sits at the peak of a comfortable mountain. The iPhone is its golden goose, accounting for over half of Apple's revenue year after year. But comfort can breed complacency. New iPhones are still incremental. Faster chips here, slightly better cameras there, marginally improved battery life. Rumors swirl about Apple glasses that would rival Meta's AR lenses, but nothing concrete has emerged. Patent filings tease headsets that look like ski goggles, but public pressure mounts. Will Apple finally break free from the rectangle in your pocket model, or will it let others leapfrog it entirely? Apple's dominance in the smartphone market has endured for over a decade, but this new movement raises questions about its future. If OpenAI and Ive's non-smartphone defines a new category of personal device, one that anticipates needs and minimizes reliance on screens. Apple may find itself forced to reinvent or risk obsolescence. The next generation of users might prioritize devices that integrate AI so seamlessly that glancing at a screen feels archaic. For Apple, merely iterating on the iPhone formula might not be sufficient. It may need a groundbreaking pivot to maintain its leadership. 
Beyond the big three, OpenAI, Meta, and Google, numerous startups and legacy brands are experimenting with foldable screens, holographic projectors, and even early-stage brain-computer interfaces. But none can match the combined mystique of Johnny Ive meets OpenAI. That's why investors and press alike hang on every whispered prototype leak. If any device can truly shatter the smartphone paradigm, it's the one that melds Ive's minimalist genius with ChatGPT-esque neural power. So what does all this mean for you, the everyday user? Let's go to 2027, when this non-smartphone finally hits the market. You wake up, and your device, snug in your jacket pocket, senses you stirring. Without a screen flickering in your face, it whispers your day's priorities through a gentle buzz. As you walk, a subtle vibration reminds you that you're nearing your favorite cafe, where your order is queued. When an urgent email arrives, the device doesn't blast your entire world with red alerts. It simply nudges you with a tiny pulse and a short phrase. Project Delta Deadline Extended. You tap a discrete sensor to confirm you've read it, and it fades away. No endless pop-ups, no FPS-style notification counter hijacking your focus. Beyond pure convenience, consider the mental health benefits. By removing the default, pick up and doom scroll temptation, this device could dramatically cut screen time. It's built to be with you, not to possess you. You won't instinctively check it every five minutes. You'll only call it up when it's truly valuable. That's a radical shift in personal tech, from all-consuming to carefully curated. Of course, always listening AI and context-aware sensors come with privacy concerns. For this device to know your location, mood, and habits, it needs access to potentially sensitive data biometrics, audio inputs, and real-time location tracking. The big question looms. Can you trust a company with that level of insight into your life? Will they safeguard your data, or will they monetize every heartbeat? That's a tension at the heart of next-gen hardware. The same features that enable seamless experiences could become vectors for unprecedented surveillance. Your Ean is a personalized assistant. The Yang is a tool that could track your every move. Societally, Whoever wins this hardware war could redefine entire sectors. Just as smartphones spawn the app economy, transforming transport, banking, shopping, and socializing, a new category of ambient AI device could birth services we haven't yet imagined. Personalized healthcare monitoring could shift from wristbands to truly predictive interventions, your device pinging you before your blood sugar dips too low. Retail experiences might serve up product demos when you walk down a store aisle no QR code scanning required. Banking apps could evolve into passive advisors, nudging you when certain spending patterns emerge. Education could go hands-free, delivering micro-lessons through audio wherever you are. The possibilities stretch into every facet of life. But a final question remains. Will Apple wake up in time? Or will OpenAI's audacious gamble, combining Johnny Ive's design brilliance with bleeding-edge AI, knock the entire market on its heels?